Hey, everybody. Um, I'm Gregory with Regen Network. And um, yeah, I'm super grateful to be here and really excited. It's, um, I have, so just high level, taking a step back and sort of framing things out for a moment, I have the firm belief that crypto and DeFi specifically can lead the climate finance revolution. And I believe that the competition between monies in which we're trying to optimize the public good that a currency provides for the communities of users, uh, there's really a competition to um, reduce the negative externalities associated with providing that utility at the end of the day. And this is about us coming together as a crypto community and really like rolling our sleeves up and making sure that w not only do we um, offset the negative externalities from emissions uh, of mining, um, but also that we go beyond that and we actually make our currencies have associated with positive externalities. And so we're going to get into, you know, sort of our theory of change at Region Network. We f were founded, um, we founded Region Network back in 2017. You can find a pretty awesome and um, um, kind of hilarious uh, presentation by me at, um, uh, in Cancun at DevCon. <laughs> Super fun. Um, and we've just been at it ever since. So I'm going to take everybody on a little bit of a walk through our approach to essentially create a crypto native peer-to-peer -to -peer public infrastructure for minting the highest quality, most transparent and auditable carbon credits possible and getting them right up into the blockchain ecosystem so that they can be used in the variety of different ways that we've been exploring today. Um, so. Stepping back again, this is a 1,000 one gigaton problem. So if we sequester over the next 30 years 1,000 gigatons or one teraton, we will be able to bring ourselves back to 350 parts per million, which is considered you know, roughly a pre-industrial atmospheric carbon average. Right? And so that's where that, um, those numbers on the Klima deck where the World Economic Forum is saying, hey, this is going to be a like three to four gigaton per year marketplace are coming from. Like we have to ramp it up. Three, four, five gigatons per year is going to get us to the thousand gigatons that we have to reduce and sequester into different systems. We believe that all of that can be sequestered into living systems in Earth. Coral reefs, mangroves, soil, forests, um, community gardens, all of the things that actually make the biosphere a livable, beautiful place, that's the place to store the carbon. We can also store it in basalt and inject it into the Earth and do all sorts of other cool things, but those are less effective at creating co-benefits, and that's something we're really passionate about at Regen Network. Um, Conservative estimates, like the most conservative scientists was, would agree that 600 gigatons can be sequestered into living systems, forests and soil. So just to like frame that out a little bit, in terms of like, this is like biological carrying capacity, rooting this back into what's going on in our ecological systems. So I'm gonna basically skip this. This is, it's, it's, it's a bigger opportunity than this. Similar to Klima, we have a big aim. Our aim is to be the largest supplier of carbon credits in the world as they're the largest purchaser and holder of carbon credits. So <clears throat> we would like to expand quantity because there's a huge bottleneck right now in getting carbon credits to market and we want to increase quality. Those two things are usually opposed, but by bringing together blockchain technology, machine learning, satellite, um, remote sensing, we actually feel like we can, br we can create, again, crypto native monitoring, reporting, verification, and minting process that drives down the cost of auditing an asset, increasing its quality, 
um, ensures that money goes directly in a peer-to-peer -peer payment to, to the people who are responsible for creating that public good so we can create higher quality and we can give the community of farmers and land stewards, foresters, people who are taking direct action, they're the ones who are own the protocol, are minting the tokens, are getting paid for all of this stuff so we can radically expand supply at the same time. All right, so we're basically in the business of turning all of these people who we work with every day into a DAO that helps govern, produce these credits, govern these credits, and create this market solution. Okay, so just a quick glimpse into our registry system. This is the uh, user interface. Um, we sold these credits here, Wilmount Farm. We did sort of a groundbreaking pilot last year where we did sort of soup to nuts from scratch using remote sensing um, and um, in-field sampling. We created uh, soil carbon sequestration, carbon removal credits, and we sold 100% of those credits to Microsoft last year. It was 50,000 tons, which was, at the time, the biggest soil carbon credit uh, purchase in history, which is pretty exciting. So you can just get a sense of what it's going to look like, or what it does look like to be able to list credits in the marketplace and um, get a sense of you know, what's going on. These are all essentially fractional NFTs so with all the metadata. Um, really resonate with a lot of the different, you know, fungi proof seasons. There's sort of a lot of convergent evolution here. It's really exciting. Um, did I? Whoa. Okay, going back. Okay, so we're also doing a bunch of app integrations, again, so that there's sort of, so that people can do digital signatures, uh, attestations, essentially attestation network in the process of minting, uh, you know, these tokens. Um, again, a big part of this, as we've been talking about, uh, there wasn't a slide on this, but I sort of think of, you have the sort of, Project development, monitoring, reporting, and verification. These are hard, real-world problems. This is a meat space in real life. There's humans, forests, soil, things happening. Um, so we were just chatting about that. You know, we basically make tools to be able to have people do attestations about what's happening, whether it's a scientist, a verification agency, et cetera, in the process of minting. The next layer up is, you know, um, after, it's, after you mint that token is assessment of quality. It's curation, it's governance, does it meet standards? Can we aggregate it? Can we create index? So here's just a, a quick look about how, it, you know, essentially the process that's going to be live on chain in about six weeks to add credit classes, to dispense, um, funds from the, the public spending pool on the blocked on region network right now, and for instance, approve a set of credit class creators from a DAO like BitOWG to be able to actively be curating on the blockchain. Um, so, you know, that's fast, and there's a lot there to unpack. Um, basically, I think the takeaway that I'd love to leave everybody with is, um, I mean, it's a couple fold. One is sort of the inspiration, which is, at least from my perspective, this is an imperative, right? And the only people in the world that are going to do this are us. This is going to be led by the decentralized crypto, blockchain, DeFi world, because the institutions don't have the capability, they're dragging their feet. I forgot to mention this in one of the previous slides, but to get a new credit class to market in a traditional, in like the Vera registry, it costs several million dollars and it takes several years, right? The, the credit class that we launched, that we sold to Microsoft, it took us about $200,000 and it took us eight months, right? If we can build the tools to be able to launch quality credits at several orders of magnitude less expensive and higher quality, then we'll actually expand supply. And what supply means, it's not just, 
you know, um, more carbon credits for Klima. It's not just more assets to ape into, although that's exciting and fun. It's impact. It's actually the planet healing itself. It's us participating in healing the planet. And so if I can leave with sort of that inspiration, which is, you know, this is the manifestation of, I believe, the highest expression of the philosophy and ideals of what we all got into blockchain in the first place for, which is to enable communities to create socially constructed value that's meaningful to them. And what's more meaningful than a beautiful, thriving planet, right? So thank you. Yeah, questions. So I have the question. Oh, mic drop. Oh. <laughs> so given that the UN is meeting this week to talk about blockchain and the meaning of the planet, um, what do you think world governments have any role to play in crypto? For sure. And uh, Joseph, who's not here, but maybe we're going to watch a video right now, um, created a um, sort of a sister project to a lot of the ones that you've been hearing about focused on international government stuff. We could go on a whole, I mean, there's a whole really interesting, Martine Weinstein, who's one of the um, advisors for, for Klima, does a lot of work here as well. And there's a whole, I believe, really exciting role actually for IBC, for Inter-Blockchain Communication Protocol, in creating the nested jurisdictional accounting system that allows nation states to maintain their carbon registries, that allows market participants to interact with those carbon registries, and allows us to have a global stock take that's accurate. And so, um, the, the Bitmo platform, which Joseph is going to talk about, is basically like the pioneer in creating an interface using Ethereum for nation states to actually kind of get their shit together and do decent carbon accounting. And again, it's like, it, it's a really interesting, like there's a paradox where, you know, the, the crypto pirates are providing the tools for the bureaucrats to, you know, engage in meaningful climate accounting. And there doesn't need to really be, it's not, it doesn't need to be adversarial, right? We can actually work together on a lot of this stuff.